Good afternoon, and welcome to NASA headquarters. I'm Bettina Inklang, Associate Administrator for NASA's Office of Communications. Thank you for joining us today to discuss NASA's human exploration plans. Working with our commercial and international partners, we'll land astronauts on the moon again in the next decade. We will also push human exploration farther into the solar system than ever before, including Mars. Today, we'll hear from NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine and William Gerstenmeyer, Associate Administrator for Human Exploration and Operations Mission Directorate. Jim, over to you. Well, thank you, Bettina. I appreciate your hard work in putting this together. And thank you to all the folks who are partnering with us on this big objective. So today, um, we're highlighting a broad agency announcement about putting humans back on the surface of the moon. And of course, you're here today because one of your, your company is, is interested in participating in this activity. And we're very interested in your participation in a way that um, maybe historically, NASA hasn't you know, involved commercial industry the way we're involving it today. And I'm gonna tell you why we're doing it. The president issued what we call Space Policy Directive One. It says that we're gonna go back to the moon. And I like to say that we're gonna go forward to the moon. We're gonna go to the moon in a way that we've never gone to the moon before. We're gonna go with international partners. We're gonna go with commercial partners. And here's the key element, we're gonna go sustainably. In other words, this time when we go to the moon, we're gonna stay. So we're not going back to the moon to leave flags and footprints and then not go back for another 50 years. We're gonna go sustainably to stay with landers and robots and rovers and humans. And that's what we're here to talk about today. We're gonna to put humans on the surface of the moon. We're gonna build an architecture where we can go back and forth again and again and again. Another piece of Space Policy Directive One is actually using the resources of the moon. It was discovered back in 2008 that there was potentially water ice on the surface of the moon. In 2009, NASA did a study and we've now discovered that there's hundreds of billions of tons of water ice on the surface of the moon. So, New American policy, we're gonna utilize the resources of the moon. Water ice represents oxygen, air to breathe. It represents water to drink. In other words, life support. But it also represents rocket fuel. Hydrogen and oxygen is the same fuel that powered the space shuttles. So all of that is abundant in hundreds of billions of tons at the poles of the moon. So we're gonna go back to the moon. We're gonna go forward to the moon. We're gonna go with international partners and with commercial partners. We're gonna go sustainably. We're gonna utilize the resources of the moon. We're gonna retire risk, we're gonna improve technology, and then we're gonna take as much of this as possible and replicate it at Mars. And this is all part of the President's Space Policy Directive One that we here at NASA are charged with moving out on. And friends, we're moving out very quickly. When we think about this architecture, we now have more agencies on the face of the planet than ever before. And we've demonstrated that with many of these agencies, like on the International Space Station, we can all do more together than any one of us could do alone. And even better than having more agencies on the face of the planet than ever before, we also have more private companies, more private industry that is interested in this kind of activity, which enables us to do more than we've ever been able to do before. NASA has an objective. When we think about what we've already done in low Earth orbit with commercial resupply, our objective is to be one customer of many customers in a robust marketplace for low Earth orbit. If we're one customer of many customers, the costs go down. But we also want to have numerous providers that are competing on cost and innovation. And because of that, access to space is going up and the cost to access to space is going down. We've demonstrated it with commercial resupply to the International Space Station. We're now demonstrating it this year when we launch American astronauts on American rockets for the first time since the retirement of the space shuttle in 2011. We're gonna demonstrate this with commercial crew taking our astronauts back and forth to the International Space Station. So then the next step is how do we take advantage of all this commercial industry and actually apply it to the moon? And really that's what we're here to talk about today and get your feedback. For this particular industry day, we've actually decided to open it up and let NASA TV in. 
And of course, uh, they're going to see firsthand kind of what we're up to today. And I'd like to, for now, turn it over to the Associate Administrator for the Human Exploration and Operations Mission Directorate here at the NASA headquarters and have him talk a little bit about what this architecture is and why it's important. Uh, and then, of course, I'll, I'll take it back from you, Bill. But uh, Bill Gerstenmeyer, Associate Administrator, Human Exploration and Operations. Thanks, Jim. All right. Again, thank you, Jim. And this is kind of non-traditional for us in a way. We typically do industry days, and we do them in a little more closed format than this. But this is the beginning where we really want to, Jim and I wanted to kick off and kind of show you the bigger architecture, the things we're planning, and how we think this is very different than what we did before when we went back to the moon with humans. This is really sustainable. This is going to be fast. We're, we're going to need the best and brightest from you and in industry. We're going to need the best and brightest from the international partner community to pull all this off. And we, we've got a great plan to do this. It all fits under Space Policy Directive 1 with sustainability. It fits under that in cooperation with industry, uh, commercial partners, and also with international partners. So we'll, we'll get into the details later with the teams. After Jim and I leave, it'll be more of a traditional kind of industry day where the presenters will come up. They'll talk to you about what's out there in uh, the broad agency announcement. They'll talk to you about the specific details and, and other things moving forward. But kind of as part of the overarching picture, let me just show you a couple pictures that are in the uh, broad agency announcement. So if I could have the first slide, please. This is the, the descent uh, landing test that we would like to do in 2024. Again, this is the reference architecture. So this is what the basis is for the broad agency announcement. Um, we want you to work to this to give us ideas for this activity. The idea is we get proposals from you by the 25th of March. We'll evaluate those, kind of make selections in May, and then the goal is to have you on contract by July. We'll work through a six-month study phase. So the idea is how do these pieces fit together? How should they be designed? Where is the right reusability? Where is the right um, interfaces? What are the critical pieces of this? But we're also open that if there's some other, you know, totally different architecture that isn't based off of this reference plan, We'll look at that. We'll look at, the, look at that in light of the objectives, the bigger objectives of sustainability, open architecture, and going fast. And we'll see if it makes sense. And if it meets those other bigger open architecture kind of ideas, we'll go evaluate that probably in some other activity other than this broad agency announcement. But this is the broad agency announcement. This is the reference configuration that we've studied. But we're not naive enough to think we've thought of all the pieces of this. We want your inputs, and that's the details that you'll be able to give through this study period of six months. And we plan to carry multiple providers through this six-month period. And not only the providers are doing the study, but in the spirit of going fast, we can actually down-select out of this and actually go to hardware development and actually go to flight with these concepts. So this is a way for us in the, in the speed aspect to look at a new acquisition approach. So we see this as the, the descent uh, capability, this demonstration. We see it going to Gateway. Uh, we believe in 2024 we'll be able to launch both the, the Orion capsule and a, a small utilization module to Gateway, and that will be the, the docking place where the, the descent lander can uh, dock to, and then it can go down and land on, on the moon. And the next slide, this shows you kind of what we envision in 2026. This is all three components. This is the ascent uh, portion of the, of the design. Um, it's also the descent piece and then also the transfer vehicle. So in this broad agency announcement, we're asking you to look at the descent vehicle, to look at the ascent vehicle, and to look at refueling. And the idea there is we think there's lots of big macro level trades that need to occur between those three elements. We're holding off on the ascent piece for a little bit because we think we could put all the human rating into the ascent vehicle. It can essentially be the rescue vehicle. If something goes wrong on the way down to the surface of the moon, you can use the ascent vehicle to get back to Gateway. So that might be more of a traditional kind of approach where we place more of our requirements in. With this idea, we believe we can open up the descent lander to be very open, very um, amenable to industry standards, other pieces. It can be much more open architecture. We can move a little bit faster, but we'll get those details from you as we go through the, the study phase of this activity. But again, this is kind of our concept. This is the baseline reference that, that we're thinking moving forward. And then this is a demonstration without crew that actually delivers the entire system to the surface of the moon and then shows the ascent vehicle can go from the surface of the moon back to Gateway. And then next, 
Uh, next slide, please. This is the 2028 configuration, which would be potentially with crew from Gateway down to the surface of the moon. And as you can see in these images, also Gateway changes during this configuration. We're adding some modules to Gateway as we move forward, delivered by the SLS and Orion system. So this is the basic concept. You'll get more details from the team as they come up. They'll describe to you what's going on. They'll describe to you more the mechanics of, of how the, uh, the acquisition works through the broad agency announcement. But with that, I think that, that gives us kind of a good overview. And I'll turn it back over to Jim. Thank you, Bill. I appreciate that overview. A couple of things that I want to highlight. Um, one of the advantages of using the gateway as part of the architecture is it will enable us to get to more parts of the moon than we've ever been able to get to before. Many people in this room are aware that it, it's going to hang out for 15 years in what we call a near rectilinear halo orbit, where it's kind of balanced, if you will, between Earth's gravity and, and the moon's gravity, and it's going to be in a position where it doesn't take a lot of fuel to maintain that particular orbit. But it is going to have solar electric propulsion, so it can maneuver. It's not going to move, maneuver down to low lunar orbit, because then you'd have to have a lot more thrust to get out of low lunar orbit. But from that near rectilinear halo orbit, it can go to the L1 point, it can go to the L2 point, and that gives us more access to more parts of the moon than ever before. The moon is a very fascinating and diverse kind of, well, world. And, and there's a lot about it that we still don't know. And like I said, from 1969, when we first landed on the moon, all the way up until 2008, a lot of scientists believed the moon was bone dry. And why was that? Well, it's because we landed in that equatorial region of the moon. Now what we want to do is we want to get to more parts of the moon than ever before. There's a lot there we still don't know. What the gateway enables us to do is to get to all those parts, not just with human landers, but also with robots and rovers and other landers. So this is a, this is a great opportunity for us as an agency to take advantage of that. Uh, the other thing is with this open architecture capability. The way we do docking, the way we do data, the way we do communications, we want all of this to be wide open. The way we do avionics and navigation, we want it to be so wide open that anybody can participate. That's really the ultimate objective. And you're here today to help us figure out how we can maximize the uh, utility of every corporation that wants to get involved in this, maybe even private individuals that want to get involved, and even international partners that want to get involved. That's what this architecture is all about. I liked what Gersten Meyer said. He's absolutely right. We're looking for people to respond to this reference architecture of the broad agency announcement, but that doesn't mean other ideas are off the table, and it doesn't mean that other ideas could not be you know, utilized by the agency. So um, I, I really am excited about this, and I'm excited about Industry Day, coming here to the NASA headquarters and being able um, to share with you kind of what the vision is, and of course hear back from all of our partners on this uh, kind of big objective. So. With that, Bettina, thank you for uh, allowing us to open up this industry day like this, and uh, I appreciate you, and all of you for being here. And we appreciate you, Jim. Absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you, Jim, and thank you, Bill. That's a wrap for our show today. The industry forum will continue shortly after, offline. For more information about um, human exploration, you can visit www.nasa.gov backslash moon to Mars. Thank you so much, and have a great day. Happy Valentine's Day.